MongoDB is a general purpose document based database that used widely by different companies. I used it myself to handle millions of records and it scales really well. Um, it has a format like the document format similar to JSON, which is called BSON, binary JSON. Now, in a, in instead of us managing the nodes installed locally, um, I will use um, a cloud-based service offered by MongoDB called MongoDB Atlas. And that will make it much easier and more realistic. And there is a free tier that we will use. Um, I think it's up to one gig. Um, so go ahead and you can si sign up for that for free and so that we can set up the cluster and the next. Okay, so now after signing up for the MongoDB Atlas, we, are, we see this dashboard. Now, in the, the first thing is the projects. So, um, according to this case, we have project zero. And the next thing we need is to create cluster. The cluster will have the, the nodes, like the MongoDB servers, where each node will have the MongoDB instance. Um, normally, it has three nodes, like as a replica said. So let's go ahead and click on the build a cluster to create our first cluster here. So here we need to choose between our the type of cluster. We'll go with the free one, the shared clusters. So click on the create cluster. Now here we need to decide where which cloud provider and region we need to to provision this cluster. Now it supports different cloud providers. For me, I will go with the AWS. And uh, as far as the or the origin, the region, I will go with the Oregon. And uh, here, like you can see the different cluster type and uh, information like the RAM and, and uh, etc. So now we can create the cluster. It will take few minutes until it provision the cluster for us. Um, now if you look here on the current dashboard for the clusters, um, the current cluster name is cluster 0. You can see it has this cluster tier information. The region is in AWS and the type which is like a three a replica set that has three nodes. And uh, this is all within the free tier that we created. Now our cluster provisioned successfully. This is uh, the updated dashboard. It has uh, charts about the operations, number of connections, the, the size of the documents. This is more detailed view about the cluster with the nodes that we have, the three nodes available. Um, next thing, now we need to enable access to this cluster from outside through our application. Now, in order to do that, we need to create a username and password. So go ahead and click on the button. Here we will create a new database user. Um, the type here we will choose the password. Now for the uh, for the password authentication, just enter the the uh, the username and password, and then from the drop down, we need to choose the privileges. So we have uh, different choices. Now probably a better choice is to create a read to a specific database. For here, I'll just go with the read and write to any database for simplicity. I'm not going to create one since I already have this username and password created earlier. Here we can see even if we want to create custom roles. The next step to enable the access is to whitelist your IP address. You can whitelist a specific IP address by creating the at current IP ad address. But um, for our use case, we enable uh, any IP address to be connected to this cluster from outside in, in case we want to deploy this to the cloud. So uh, in order to do that, we need to create the uh, 
kind of the general uh, any IP address which is 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 this will enable any IP address to connect to this cluster from outside. You can he you even make it like temporary to be deleted afterwards. Here we can create that. Uh, again, I already created this, whitelisted this IP address. So uh, now we should be able to connect our application to this cluster. So we need to go back to our cluster that we created earlier and then click on the connect button here. What we need to do here is to connect our application to the cluster. So uh, we have a couple of choices here, but what we need to do here is to click on the connect your application since we, we have a Node.js application. Um, now there are like different types of driver that it provides. We will go with the Node.js since that's the framework we are using. And uh, what do we need? We just need to copy this connection string. Now Mongoose has this um, method called connect where we are going to pass. So we will use the mongoose.connect connect method and we will pass the connections